Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our Appium with Java series, today we are going to see how we can streamline or we can remove the repetitive code into our, uh, what do you call this project, so that any kind of topics that we are discussing or anything that we are creating, we need not to really repeat those things. In a sense, if you see that at every file or at every java class that we are creating here we are creating this execute test options and then ui automator 2 option everywhere these are repeating and you can see driver dot find element and everything we are doing now what i'm going to do for our upcoming sessions whenever we discuss any appium topics we need not to really repeat all these things okay for this we will be using the base package in this base package we will be keeping certain information to handle handle the driver and to accept your execute test options or the UI automator 2 options. Now how we have kept this Appium server class right now in any of my file I can call this particular Appium server. So the same thing I will be creating set in more util files or like some uh, Java classes which will help me to kind of reduce the redundancy or the repetitive of the code. Now for this, if you see the first thing that I need to really set it up is the to launch the app, right? Now to launch the app, what do we need? We need actually the for Android, we need these options. For iOS, we need these options, right? So for this, I will be creating a new Java class actually. Now let me put it as a app factory. Okay, I'll put it as a app factory. Now this app factory will be holding all of the all of your what do you call the launching of your iOS application and Android application. Now for this, I'm going to first do here. Let me put one public static class so that I can use it in any of my other files. So I will put it as Android launch app. Okay. And then here I will be sending the options. Now for this Android launch app, what do you need? You need the UI automator two options, right? So I will be accepting these options actually here. Now inside this, I will be specifying certain things. Now the first thing is that I will be setting up my driver object, right? So for this, I will be creating Appium driver. Okay. And driver. And here I will be saying that driver equal to new Android driver and here I need to set the URL. Okay. Now this URL would be what actually the local host 4723, right? 4723 is my port where the Appium server is running and then this options what I am accepting from there. That's it. Now you just need to do this much actually here. Now let me add exception. And let's see what is the issue here it is coming non static so no worries here you can keep this edge static okay so that this error will be gone now the same thing i will be creating for my ios as well so here instead of android i will be saying ios underscore and ios underscore launch app but here instead of uh, your ui automator i will be using the execute test and this has to be my ios driver that's it now the driver initialization is done okay now the second thing is that i need to set up the getter and shutter for my app driver appium driver so for that i will be creating a new file here or a new java class and i will say app driver now this will hold my getter and setter, right? So I will be creating one private, okay, static, and then I will put it as thread local in case if you want to run in parallel, this will resolve that. So I will take a driver, actually web driver as my type. You can take as a Appium driver as well. No issues in that. And I will be saying new thread local. That's it. And then you will be creating one public static web driver web driver 
and here as i told you need to set and get right so i will be get driver now what this get driver will be holding now this will simply return this driver actually this driver object so wherever you need into your application right in any of these files you need to call this app driver dot get driver now this is null right if you see that there is nothing really it is coming here uh, you can make it as final as well. So this is basically singleton pattern if you uh, talk about from the Java standpoint where you cannot create an object of this driver in any of your files actually there. So I will keep actually a set driver because see because this is null right here at this moment nothing is there. So here what I am going to do I will be accepting a driver object. Now once I accept the driver what I am going to do I will set this as simple as that. So I will say driver dot set oops not that. So I will say driver dot set and then here uh, let me keep a different naming convention here so that it would be good. Uh, no confusion will be there and let me print something and I will say that driver is set some name uh, something so that it will print into my console now this is my getter this is my setter now where i should be assigning to this right means from some file i need to attach the driver now where exactly the driver initialization is happening here right as i told only once this driver has to be initialized either here or here actually depending on which method you are calling in one instance of your test case execution you cannot call at the same time right either first this one or this one or vice versa so in this i need to call that app driver okay this app driver i'll say dot set and you can see this set driver method this set driver method need what a web driver now appium driver is also a subclass of that so i am sending that as my object to this setter class here also okay now this job is done here now you are sending the driver here so the first step is that somewhere in your test case you will be calling this method this method will be initializing the driver and sending to the set driver now wherever you need you will be using that by using the get driver as simple as that okay so we are pretty much done with our stuff actually here now the same thing how we kept it here right we can put here something like here I will say Android driver is set and here I will be saying iOS driver is set. Okay, now let's say that I want to have actually change this one. See now in this case, I don't want to send every time driver actually here you can see many places I'm using driver and if you see here, I'm also calling the driver object actually somewhere here if you see that. Uh, let me show you here you can see I'm calling this local driver object now if I am using this particular way right I simply need to call wherever I need that driver object right I simply can say that app driver dot get driver that's it now let me show you that now to just uh, what you call execute this I can edit this particular method or I can create one new method actually here now new java class and then let me put it as let's say that i want to uh, what do you call automate the ios contacts application ios on contact scroll some like uh, what do you call test case i'm creating here now either you can use the main method or you can use the at the rate test java whatever at the rate test actually there that is nothing but the test ng right so at this moment i'm just trying here actually to just showcase you guys and then in now ios right now see i have to do this one actually right in, in any kind of new test case i have to create i have to set the options and i have to reinitialize that or initialize that now in this contact scroll what i'm going to do i don't really need to do this step actually i'll tell you that so what I'm going to do here is that I will be setting up these options because I'm not sure right which of the practice file you are using which application that's why 
I am keeping this option as a dynamic for all these files. But instead of doing this way, right, what you can do, you can simply call this method actually. So app factory, you can see like this app factory dot iOS launch app because I need to launch the iOS application. And then I will simply say options and you don't need this driver object now. This statement is not required because when you are doing this right let me go into this and here you can see it is setting up the driver uh, sorry insta uh, instantiating the driver object it is setting the driver also now whenever i need the driver object right i simply can say that app driver dot get driver that's it and now i can use any kind of method that is related to my driver as simple as that now everything all these steps setting up the driver or wherever you need the driver object outside of your class method you don't really need to call that uh, particular method actually you can directly call this even in your page object model whenever you are creating a framework this will be very much essential for you okay so now let's say that uh, I want to automate the contact application right now let me open the simulator here and if you see the contact application right the contact application is this one actually here you can see I want to simply do a scrolling actually here now what I need to do I don't have any scroll mechanism here so what I'm going to do here is that this scroll is also repeated if you see that in these two methods wherever I'm creating I have to call this I have to write the logic and then I have to call that into this test case right so it is also repeating these things before we were simply for learning purpose I was showing you but we don't want to repeat this scroll methods in every Java class and then call them so for that I, what I'm going to do I will be creating another Java class and I will say util now in this util class right I will be call I will be putting all this swipe and the scroll options so like what I'm trying to say is that all these things the scroll swipe method everything I will be keeping in this util okay and then there are certain parameters let me see that okay you might not need those let me come back here and couple of uh, errors you will be getting don't worry about that now this is like a simple enum so I'm just leaving that as it is and then if you come back here scroll method these need the direction and the scroll ratio which we can send it from the specific test cases now here the scroll duration is already assigned here this is the third uh, 300 millisecond actually now here you see you need the driver object right now because I'm taking as a generic from where I should get this driver object I will get it from this app driver now that is what the benefit I was talking and I don't need to call a specific class actually there rather than a generic classes get driver object or the get driver method now wherever I think I need here as well right so simple thing app driver dot get driver and then you can delete this one like this you can do and I believe there is nothing else is required if we should be good now you need the duration here right now instead of putting this duration here also you need another duration right this is scroll duration because you need here as well okay so what I can do here you know okay so this is internally calling this one so you don't need to really keep a what do you call here a specific uh, duration scroll duration so you should be good with that so okay the scroll swipe and then the direction everything is now proper there is no uh, other methods really required to scroll it now let's come back here now here instead of this bundle id right i need to use the bundle id for this contact application actually now it is very straightforward you can use any of the ways uh, like which we discussed in our uh, what do you call in one of the session right now i will show you another way as well there are a couple of ways so you can even search your qa validation.com and you can say bundle id and it will give you some results here and if you go back here there are multiple ways that we have listed if you scroll down for the iOS applications like there are nearly four methods are there 
whichever way that you are feeling comfortable you can use that to get your bundle id now i'm not going to discuss that but i have that already here so i will be copy pasting that for the ease of use so the bundle id for this contact application is this one now this is why i was telling that these options will remain as separate into this actually because this method i mean here the scroll what we were learning is the this particular application but when we are coming to this particular java right java file i am using a separate mobile application so i cannot use a strict one into this app factory right here that is why this option i made it as a dynamic so that from the test cases you can send it but while preparing the framework you really don't want to work on multiple applications right like three test cases in this application another 10 uh, test cases into another abc application it should be only one mobile application on which your framework should be running now at that time we will be adding these options as a strict hard coded here okay fine then the another way is also there actually you don't need to really specify all these things you can simply ios launch app instead of uh, options right all these parameters you can send as a separate and in this actually you can call that actual uh execute test options equal to new execute test options either way you want to do that you can do okay so now let's come back to this particular uh, simulator where this contact application is there you can see there are a lot of different uh, what do you call uh, names are present actually now i can scroll to whichever what do you call contact that i want to do now let's see the util method which we created right for this scroll operation is this really works or not with our changing the way so as i do this particular line right it launches my application these are all the capabilities that i have set it up then i'm launching the application then i will simply do a scrolling actually here now to do the scrolling i'm not really clicking anything here at this moment so i will be doing like a util dot scroll and now it need a couple of things right to scroll duration now this is coming from this util dot scroll direction dot i will say down because i want to put it as a down and now scroll ratio let's say that and this scroll ratio has to be a double between 0 to 1 only so let me put it as a 0 dot 5 only okay and now i will be waiting for some time uh, let's say two seconds and then i will be quitting my driver okay so or like stopping my application or closing my application so i will say get driver dot quit so it closes the application now let me open see even you can even run this particular appium server also like if you see the appium server is coming from your base package right and i will say start that's it now you don't need to really do any kind of opening terminal and then running the appium right now let's try to run this test and let's see if it really scrolls or not into this contact application and it launches the application and you can see that it scrolled with a 50% of a scroll ratio and then it closed the application so it means that the driver setting the launching the driver and i mean app app setting app launching and the util method everything is working fine now the same way you can also use your like if you want to do for the uh, android contact application even android has a default contact application right even there also you can launch the application and then you can have multiple con contacts into that you can add some names and you can scroll that as well you can use the same concept only but if you see that this scroll right here like there are a lot of different ways you can scroll it based on a specific name you can scroll you can scroll and grab all these elements from here and all these things we will see in our upcoming sessions so at this moment we just wanted to keep a kind of a what you call base package with some utility methods so that it will be helpful for our upcoming learning sessions 
that was pretty much it for today so hope this session is useful and uh, we will be talking some more interesting topics in our upcoming sessions so stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel thank you for watching